What's up everybody, Brandon Johnson here again and thanks for joining me. Today we're taking a look at the classic old time tune, Under the Double Eagle. And this song dates all the way back to the late 1800s in Austria. And it's actually a reference to the two-headed eagle in the coat of arms of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, which doesn't even exist anymore. But it's, a, it's kind of a historical throwback to that era of time in Europe you know, before the Great War. And one of the earliest recordings was by the Carter family in the mid-1930s. And there's been many, many different versions of this song over the years that have been performed by many different styles of artists. And it's even been covered by artists as wide-ranging as Benny Goodman and his orchestra. And it's also featured in the Monty Python film, The Flying Circus. And this particular lesson, we're gonna be covering kind of the Doc and Merle Watson version. And so you're gonna see some really kind of signature Doc riffs and runs in it, especially Doc's amazing ability to play melody and chords at the same time. So this song actually has four sections to it. It's kind of a long form tune. We have an intro, an A part, a B part, and then a C part. You may pick and choose different sections and kind of use them to your liking based on the arrangement of the song that you're playing. And we're gonna be performing this particular version of the tune in the key of C. And really it really modulates from C to F. And there's even a B flat thrown in there at the very end. Let's take a look at the intro section now for Under the Double Eagle. This is this section is kind of unique to the Doc and Merle Watson version. Nevertheless, I think it's a really cool kind of lead in into the actual melody of this iconic tune. So we're going to start out here on an upstroke on the first fret B to third fret B to first fret B. That's going to be our lead in or our pickup going into kind of the main form of this intro. In the beginning of measure number one, we have a downstroke. We're gonna actually play the G chord here, but just play that open B string as part of the melody. So we're gonna play the pickup. And then we're gonna to go to that G chord shape, but we're just gonna play the open B string on a downstroke to initiate the beginning of the melody here in measure number one. And then you'll see an up down on kind of the upper register of that G major chord. So it's that third fret high E, open B, and then a downstroke. You'll just see like an open B there, but you could also just play like the third fret high E as well. So you're gonna do another one of those. And then you'll see an upstroke on the open G, second fret G, and then open G. Okay, and then looking at measure number two, we're gonna to go to a C chord, so you'll see a third fret A, which is gonna be our root note of our C major chord. And then we're gonna follow kind of a similar format that we had in measure number one here. We have an up down on kind of the upper register of the C chord, followed by another up down. And you wanna pay attention to the timing of the notes here. You'll see that up down is on a 16th note, and then there's a series of pauses there. It's actually a dotted eighth note. And then you'll see second fret G, open G, and then an upstroke on the second fret D. Okay, let's play measures one and two now of this intro, all the way through to the metronome. One, two, three, Four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three. Two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Okay, and that leads us into measure number three. Okay, 
Okay, looking at measure number three now, you'll see we have a G major chord there. So we're gonna kind of just kind of ghost finger this chord here. We're not actually gonna play the chord, but we're gonna play some chord tones. So we're gonna start out here on the open G. We're gonna do a down up. These are 16th notes now. Down up on the open B. And then a down stroke on an eighth note on that third fret high E. It's gonna be just the upper register of your G major chord there. So that third fret high E is on an eighth note. And then we have three sixteenth notes on the open B again. So that's a down, up, down. Followed by first fret E, up stroke open E, and then a down stroke on the third fret B. Now I would advise using this particular G chord shape since we're moving from a C to a G. It's just a lot easier to kind of move between those two chords. Okay, and then looking at measure number four there, we have an upstroke on the first fret B, on the first downbeat of measure number four over the C chord. So we can kind of plant that there and sort of play the rest of this melody around that chord shape. So we've got a downstroke on the second fret G to a quick open G. That open G is on an eighth note. Then we have second fret D, and then an upstroke on the third fret low A. Of course, that's that's your C major chord shape there. And really, what we're doing is we're playing a C major arpeggio here, starting with that first fret B, and then second fret G to open, second fret D, and then that third fret. A, which is your root note over the C chord. So that's a really cool, just kind of a way to play a C major arpeggio. And then at the end there, you'll see the same lead-in run that we had at the beginning. First fret B, third fret B, back to first. Okay, let's play measures three and four now, all the way through to the metronome. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Okay, looking at measure number five now, we have the same chord structure. So we have a G chord going into a C chord. And what we're gonna do here is a really cool kind of cross-picking section. We're gonna play two downstrokes on the open G and the open B. 
This is kind of while we're holding our G major chord shape here. And then we're going to play an upstroke on that third fret high E. So it's going to be a down, down, up. Then we're going to play that same pattern again. Followed by a down on the open B, an upstroke on the third fret high E and the open B, and then another downstroke on that open B. And then we have open G, 2nd fret G, on a 16th note, slight gap, and then an open G, kind of like what we had in measure number 1, kind of at the end there, over that G chord. And then you see going into measure number 6 there, we have our C chord again. Down stroke on that 3rd fret A, and then an up down another up down on the upper register of the chord like we did in measure number two and then again second fret G open and then second fret D so it's very similar to kind of how it how it began in a way this is a repeat of measures one and two with a slight variation here with the cross picking over the G Okay, let's play measures five and six now, all the way through to the metronome. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Okay, and that leads us into measure number seven. Looking at measure seven and eight now, we're going to play a G to a D to a G turnaround, which is very typical when you're playing out of the G chord position. And what we're going to do here is we're going to play a little bit more cross picking. We're going to play a down stroke on that open G. And you're just going to hold the G chord again like we've been doing. And then you're going to see another down stroke on the open B to an up stroke on the third fret high E. That's on a 16th note and then an open G again. And then here, what we're gonna do for this D chord is we're gonna play a slightly modified D chord shape. We're gonna take our index finger and we're gonna place it on the second fret G. Our middle finger is gonna be on that second fret B, which is kind of the you know, part of the D chord. But the difference here is we're gonna play an open D over the downbeat of the D chord. We're gonna play second fret G. 3rd fret B, okay, I'm playing this with my index and my middle finger, and then you'll see a 4th fret D. And I'm going to play that with my ring finger, so this modified kind of D chord shape here is going to get that 4th fret D for us at the end there on a down stroke. And then we're going to lead in to the next measure on an open G. That's going to be coming up in the next part. Okay, looking at the final measure now here, we have a G chord, which is going to be our resolve chord, before we go into the A part. And you'll see an open G there. That's on a dotted eighth note. And then on a sixteenth note, we have a second fret D to open. Then you'll see a second fret A there followed by an upstroke on that third fret low E, which is the root note of the G chord. And then we're going to start a walk up. We're going to play another third fret low E on a downstroke. Upstroke open A, and then a downstroke on that 
that second fret A string. Okay, so the measure seven and eight there are just kind of a really cool way to turn around when you're playing out of the G position. So let's play measures seven and eight now, all the way through to the metronome. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Okay, let's play measures five through eight now, all the way through to the metronome. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. Let's play the intro measures one through eight all the way through to the metronome. One, two, three, four, two, two, three. into part A. 